Hi. In this video, we're going to be. Hi. In this video, you are looking at polynomial long division. Okay. Well, the first thing I see when I see polynomial long division is the words long division, something that we learned back in elementary school. You know, that was where we would take uh, seven and see how many times we would go into twenty-two. And so we would take 7 times what gives me 22? Well, we don't have anything. But what brings me close and doesn't put me over? That's 3. We then take 3 times 7, make it 21. When we take and subtract this, yes, we have 1. And 1 is known as that remainder. So 3 up here is known as our quotient. Okay. Um, and this 7 over here was our divisor. Uh, just as a quick reminder of what long division was. Yeah, okay, I hear you laughing. So, we're ready to go. When we've got polynomial long division, what we're going to be looking at doing is taking polynomials and dividing them by either a monomial or another polynomial. So, let's look at doing something like, let's divide Uh, let's take and divide x squared minus 3x plus um, 2 by x minus 1. Okay. Now, the way we set up polynomial long division is going to be very similar to the way we set up regular long division. Okay. So, x minus 1 is the smaller value, and we're dividing by that. This means that this is our divisor function or d of x. Okay? So we're going to set d of x up, up on the outside. So here's x minus 1 going up on the outside. Now what we put on the inside is the thing that's being divided. Uh, in this case, we call it f of x. And for us, f of x is this function right here, which is x squared minus 3 times x plus 2. Okay. What we're going to find is a quotient function, q of x, and a remainder function, um, which is known as r of x. And we're going to take and divide that again by our divisor, d of x. We're going to find an answer of q of x plus r of x divided by d of x. So, how do we go about this? Well, we go about it the same way that we approached long division. We ask how many times, or what time... What times 7 is going to give me 22 or come, bring me very close to 22? Okay? For us, it was 3 up in the top. Down here, we're going to ask ourselves, concerning ourselves only with our first term, what times x will give me x squared? Okay? So the question is, what times x will give me x squared? You'll notice that we're working only with the first terms. Okay? We want the first terms, and that's kind of all we want right now. That's where we want our focus to be. So what times x gives me x squared? That's right, x. x times x gives me x squared. Now, I know that x times a negative 1 doesn't give me a negative 3, but right now, I'm not going to worry about that. Okay? I'm going to take my x times the quantity x minus 1. So x times x gives me x squared, and x times a negative 1 gives me a negative x. Okay? So here we've got the product x squared minus x, and what we're doing is, just like we, when we had the product of 3 times 7 is equal to 21, but well, we subtracted the 21 away, we're also going to subtract away the quantity that we found. We're going to subtract, subtract away that product. So x squared minus x squared is 0, and that's something that we're really going to want to focus on, making this first term equal to 0. Okay? Now, in the second piece, this is where things become a little bit tricky. But we've got a negative 3x minus a negative x. Okay? That subtracting a negative makes this the same as adding x. So a negative 3x plus x is simply just a negative 2 times x. Okay? That takes care of our first piece. Now, if this were a longer long division up here, we would start bringing down another place value. 
We're going to do the same thing, only now we're going to bring it down another term. We're going to bring down, again, another term. So this becomes a negative 2x plus 2. Okay. So now, we repeat the process. We're going to ask ourselves, what times x would give me a negative 2x? Okay. Again, what times x is going to give me a negative 2 times x? And the answer there is a negative 2. You'll notice that I'm writing the, you know, the x's above the x's, the 2's above the 2's. I'm, I'm taking and making sure that I have the same power of x lined up. This, this helps me keep things straight as I, as I proceed. Okay? Well, what times uh, x gives me a negative 2x? We said that that was a negative 2. And now what we need to do is take a negative 2 times x minus 1. Okay? So, negative 2 times x is a negative 2 times x. Well, that's good. And a negative 2 times a negative 1 is plus 2. Now, remember, we need to put this in brackets, and we're subtracting that quantity from what we have above it. So we've got a negative 2x minus a negative 2x, or positive 2x. Okay? So negative 2x plus 2x gives me 0. And over here, I've got 2 minus 2, which is also 0. We have no more terms, so 0 is actually our remainder. And we're finished because we have no more terms, so x minus 2 is the quotient function, or q of x. So, when we, have, when we divide x squared minus 3x plus 2 by x minus 1, it's equal to x minus 2. We'll look at some more videos of this.